Hello, welcome to Magnetic Fields. We're going to look at the last final part, which is about MRI machines. We see here a very big round thing. If you go to a hospital, maybe for yourself, hopefully not, but or for somebody else you know, you will see these machines in some hidden in some room somewhere. And these are amazing machines that help you take picture of your brain, like this person right here. Lie there, then the whole person will go inside the machine. Miss Lee, have you gone inside an MRI machine before? Have you ever had a brain, brain scan? Nope. No. Okay lah. No. Guys, cannot show picture of Miss Lee's brain. See all oh. the phones. But anyway, you are going to learn all the physics behind this thing, which is pretty cool. So, let's go and see the physics. What is MRI and how does it work? Okay. Now, your body is made out of what? Ah? Got a lot of these, what are these small things in your body? Living cells. <laughs> zoom into the living cells. Oh, yeah. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Zoom in. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. We are organic beings. And I think we are focusing on the hydrogen particle because it is more electromagnetic. Yep. So it so responds, but it has a lot of properties. Lots and lots and lots of hydrogen nuclei yeah. in your body. And they are just all like chilling. They are all spinning. Each of them are spinning. As you can see this blue color thing. They are all spinning mm. like a top. Look very chaotic. Everyone point everywhere. You spin here, I spin there. Everyone spin. However, care they don't care each other. But then the MRI has this beautiful, powerful, very boss-like magnetic field, and this magnetic field will cause everyone to either obey, line up with the magnetic field, or like these rebels kind of line up opposite to the magnetic field. Yeah. So that's the main picture of what we will be looking at today, long. Why? How does this idea or principle help us to image your brain? Okay, now let's look at the details. So hydrogen nuclei has a property known as, we used a keyword just now, spin. Spin, like tops, like little tiny tops. So spin, uh, spin, 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 round and round and round. And this will cause the nuclei to behave like tiny little magnets. La. Why? Because oh. mag How are magnetic field is a moving charge, right? Magnetic fields are built up by moving charge. So if you've watched the intro video by Miss Ellie, you will see that, oh, got current in the conductor, then you build a magnetic field. So all these moving little spins are tiny little magnets because they form their own little circular, circular circuit. So you spin and it, oh, you got magnetic field, okay. So it kind of like, this arrow is kind of like the B of that tiny little magnet. Yeah, kind right of. hand grip rule. Mm -hmm. So when, so like you say, when you suddenly come in a big, strong, large, uniform magnetic field, what happened to all these small, small fellas? Ah? The small magnet have to follow the big magnetic field. Yep, so large, uniform. So like what you see in the top right, they all nicely align either with the magnetic field or kind of like opposite to the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. So they experience a torque and they line up parallel or along the magnetic field. Oops, wrong pen. Hi, yeah. yeah. So the condition here is that you have to align parallel. Most will align the same direction, but you get one of two rebels that will go against the direction of the magnetic field. So parallel. Okay. Parallel. Okay, the next one. So another thing to note is that these nuclei are still spinning when they align, uh, like spinning about this blue color. Like that. Zoom, 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 zoom. Mm -hmm. So you can say that these nuclei rotate about the direction of the magnetic field because they're still spinning. But also there's another type of spin. Okay, we'll show you. And this there's another rotation called precession. So actually they're not exactly lined up ngam ngam and nice and straight. They're actually at a it's kind of like a little angle, actually. So if you see there's two kind of spinning happening here. One is your this spin, I guess nuclear spin. They are spinning about their axis. But also, their axis is also spinning about the magnetic field. Can I? Two times speed, okay? So the one that concerns us will be this precession. precession. If you find it hard to imagine, there is this kind of a picture here where you can... It's like a spinning top. So this top is spinning about its axis, but the whole axis is also moving. So this, roughly how the particles work align, roughly align with the external magnetic field. So it's the horizontal <laughs> plate also spin, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, spinning about its own axis. 
but the whole axis is also moving. Yeah, so there are two spinning things here, the yellow colour plate and also that vertical, slightly at an angle. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so just keep this in mind lah, huh? when you see of this spin. The one that matters that we'll look at is this one. The, stick. the, the stick. precession. And you have to use the term precession. You can come up with different different ways to describe how it spins, like the way we did. But during exam, the scientifically acceptable term is precession. Don't say nah, the axis spin here, spin there. No, 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 don't say that. Ah. Mm, okay, okay. We will empathize, lah, but we cannot give you marks. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we there's a special there's a lot of terms in this chapter, lah, so make sure you kind of remember or memorize them. It's like a little bit kind of like bio kind of feel. You have to know your terms, gotta use the right terms. So know the terms. So there's this thing called the Lamour frequency. I think I pronounced it correctly. Precession has its own angular frequency, right? So you oh, imagine, yeah. you imagine that stick spinning, it has its own circle and own angular frequency. That horizontal circle. So the axis actually forms a horizontal circle as it spins. Uh, so this circle got its own omega. Mm, and omega. omega is equal to 2 pi f. Hopefully you remember this from chapter 13, chapter Circular 7. Circular motion. Hmm? So it has its own frequency, and that frequency that corresponds to this omega is l'amour. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we pronounced it wrongly. Is it French? First would be l'amour. I think it's French. I, I don't know. Never mind. Maybe we, we don't know. <laughs> if you know, it's good. Tell us how to pronounce it. Okay. So we got this angular frequency. Lah. Okay, omega. Just know omega is, you know, frequency. Uh, so depending on the strong, depending on the magnetic field, this one, external magnetic field, you can have different frequency law. If the magnetic field is very strong, very, very strong, the lama frequency is, you can get roughly 40 megahertz. The spin very fast, kind of like that. So, yeah, kind of like stronger field, spin faster, bigger frequency. Okay, so how is this going to work? All right, let's keep going, let's keep going. So, now you know that you already aligned them all with this external magnetic field from the MRI machine, the big, big donut. Then, Here's where the fun begins. Now you want this nuclear resonance to happen. So what are we going to do? When you shoot in a pulse of radio frequency. You know what radio frequency is? Electromagnetic wave. So I make a reminder. You learned before in AS, right? Okay. So when a pulse of radio frequency is shot into these particles and this frequency is equal to the Lamour frequency that every particle is spinning at. Well, not every particle, but some particles. Did I spell correctly? I feel like I spell wrong. Oh, yeah, never mind. R-M-O-R, I think. Yeah, L-A-R-M-O-R. I become French now. Lamour. Liamour. Liamour. So when the pulse comes in, it has the same frequency as the Lamour frequency. And this one will cause all these little, little hydrogen or nu hydrogen nuclei or proton. Hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Nuclei. So we are, we are applying this radio frequency to the hydrogen nuclei. So you have the external radio frequency, same as their Lamour frequency. This causes resonance. The mm. applied RF frequency is the same as their natural spinny, the spin frequency. Very nice. So something like this idea lah. Yeah. So the idea of resonance is when your frequency is the same, your energy like energy will increase, correct? Your amplitude increases. Throw back to chapter 13, what resonance is. So the proton or the hydrogen nuclei or the spinny top things will get very excited and they will flip into a high energy state. So mm. if you do chemistry, then you will see that uh, I have plotted out a diagram. Okay. So the vertical axis is energy lah. You might be familiar with this if you study chemistry. This is the Hess diagram. Or if you don't, it's also okay. So you can see a higher level means higher energy. So you can see when I draw out two branches, it means that the hydrogen nuclei have two spin states. It can either spin at the higher energy state or spin at the lower energy state. So what did we learn so far? Number one, hydrogen will spin. Number two, you apply big magnetic field that will spin along the line. But got two options, high energy and low energy. Now it's time to send in some radio wave to force the low energy to flip into high energy. So if the if when you send in that radio frequency wave, is it 
if it's just nice equal to the Lamor frequency, then they will get excited and jump up to the high energy state. Because they receive energy from the radio frequency. Mm. Mm-hmm. But you know, we cannot stay high forever. Good things don't last. So before, and then we send a pulse. So it's not like I consistently bombard with radio frequency. It's just pew, pew, pew. Yes. So before the next pulse, a lot of these high energy atoms will get will go back down to low energy because it's not a permanent state. Right? Can't stay high forever. So when you go relax down into the low energy state, again, this is a physics thing, so we call it relaxation. <laughs> excitation, relaxation. Okay, you can't stay excited forever. So this relaxation will have a particular time. Depending on where the hydrogen nuclide is, we will measure that relaxation time to give us information about the tissue. Is this water particle? Is this hydrogen inside muscle, inside bone, inside fat, inside blood? They all have different relaxation time, as you can see from this handy little table. So for example, for water, the relaxation time is very slow. 400, 4,000 millisecond. Computer will measure the time. Don't worry, you don't have to take out your stopwatch. <laughs> okay, grey matter in your brain, your muscle, your liver, all these uh, have higher water content. So the relaxation time is faster. Okay, so not higher water content, higher fat content. Liver is very fatty. Right? See, fat is so slow. 250. Very short, man, the time. Mm. Excited, then so you excited. Yeah. Excited, then you excited. Yeah. So it depends on the nature of the tissue, and I'm guessing the hydrogen inside. Bio stuff, now, okay? So what okay. you need to know is just different tissue, different relaxation type. That's how okay. you differentiate yeah. between tissues, lah. okay? Yes, in our scan. So, so quick, I think now we can... Quick add-on, yeah. before, before we go to the next one, or... You said, Miss, this is only one particle. How about the rest? Like, oh, yeah. They all also will get excited and de excite one, ma. So, like what we mentioned just now, quick recap. They're all disordered, number one. Then, they are aligned, number two, because of external magnetic field. Number three, a pulse come in. RF pulse, radio frequency. Then, they become excited, okay? Then, they will de excite. So, you then see they now, they are upside down, you know? Like, for example, this one here. Eh, X, this fella. Is now pointing downwards, which is opposite to the B, the external magnetic field B. See this feather's B? So that's why it means a high energy state. So all of them are going to do their gymnastics and flip up and down uh, towards uh, between energy states. Yep. Okay, so let's write in the sentence what we just described just now, because you guys need to be able to describe this in the past year in sentences if it comes yes, up. Yes, that makes sense to the mark scheme. So before the next pulse of a uh, radio frequency wave, most proton will flip back to the lower energy state. So this flipping back to lower energy state is called relaxation. Radio frequency will be emitted by the nuclei during this relaxation process. So the time interval between the end of the incident radio frequency pulse, which is between excite- excitation and the emitted radio frequency pulse which is relaxation so time interval between excitation and relaxation is known as the relaxation time if you uh, are if you want to time it for yourself imagine the day you walk into the exam hall you come out you're very excited right then after a while you're like ah back to normal now it's relaxation time now you're going from a high energy suddenly back to your original low energy yep okay this emitted radio frequency pulse has its own signature, right? Different relaxation time, different spin. So we detect and we process this in computer. So this is where we pass it on to the computer science people. And then they'll you say, call- okay, you call the color la, or brightness la, the time, every single, everything, every single pixel got time. Okay, go and code. Okay, so this is roughly how the idea of the main physics behind the MRI. Yes. Particles align, excited, and then when they de-excite, they, re- they release some kind of Radio things wave. that we can detect. So the, let's see, during relaxation, oh, I forgot to draw. Okay, de-excite, another one come out. Hmm. So then, then you have a detectors, many, many detectors, actually, to read these piles that come out of the particle when they de-excite. Okay, so keep this in mind, because the next part, we're going to look at uh, all the 
other ideas like how do you put it together actually when a patient is in there how do you make sure you have good scans of a patient's brain and we're going to look at some of patients brains as well so see you in the next part of the mri yes bye-bye